My worst nightmare, my anxiety, the girl was like, okay, um, we have a situation, we have a full flight, full, the horror, biggest horror words ever. I let it go on the plane so bad I couldn't hold it. It was like, like a machine gun with mixed with a tuba. <laughs>
informative video breaking down the downfall of Chantal's channel despite her massive sub increase. In that video, he outlined how the Kuwait arc has essentially crippled her. 5,000 views. We wonder why she stops doing this. It's not worth her time. But we do know she knows what does still work. Right when she's back in Canada, when she's offering to take off the hijab, when she's projecting what's next, getting my own place, right? We're right back 22, 21. Now, I'll be honest with you, we're still a far cry from those close to 30, 40,000 views, but we're a heck of a lot closer than we are from 5,000 views and 9,000 views. I don't know this for sure, obviously, but if so, it would have been the smartest financial decision Chantal could have made. It was really tough to find Chantal content there for a minute. We were all pretty done with Kuwait. In this next clip, Chantal admits she's not rich, but you know, they do fine financially. I'm not rich. Like, I, we are okay. Like, we do fine. Instead, it was apparently more mundane reasons for her return to terrorize the Cornwall delivery drivers. I just felt like, what future do I have over there? I can't, like, in the summer, I can't go out. Like, I guess if I worked really hard, really hard, I guess making a future for myself, I need to be healthy, like, no matter what. But there, it was, like, a lot harder for me, you know? So I do have a lot more support here. I'm not going to run, keep running back. Like I have to like stick to my guns. I cannot go outside. I will die there in the summer. I, don't, I, I like, like both places. So it's like really hard for me. I feel very conflicted. Like, and I feel like an identity crisis a little bit. Yeah. Is this the identity crisis or is that what we've been experiencing over here in the last 18-ish months? It's exhausting and can be really depressing trying to act like someone you're not for an extended period of time and that's exactly what Chantal's been doing. I mean, I think she gave it her best go, but in the end, the moment she tried to kill off the foodie beauty aspect of herself, the less she probably felt like herself. Though, everyday lazy is certainly a good description of her, pious Miriam was too much to live up to. And though I believe she does feel conflicted, I think she's deluding herself as to why. You get homesick, but I also now I miss Kuwait a lot too because when you're you ingrain yourself in a culture for a year and a half or however long I was there, it's like you know, and my I miss Julia and Harry so bad. Like, that's like no matter which country I'm in, I have heartbreak because I miss my cats here, and then I miss Julia, like her little face and her fishy breath. <gasps> but Salah is a good cat dad, I don't want to leave him like he. Genuinely, genuinely looks sad at the thought of leaving Julia and he'll just bring her here you know or if he if something happens and he can't I will go back to Kuwait and get her inshallah he can come here yeah no I'm not here to renew my visa he hated animals that move he used to half light he used to he was not an animal person he was not raised with pets he could care less about them before he didn't hate them like, you know, he wouldn't hurt anything, but he fell in love with Julia. I honestly have no idea how Salah feels about those animals, seeing as Julia is pretty matted, still not fixed, which likely also means not vaccinated. The level of care is debatable, but I do know that Chantal couldn't give two fucks about those animals past what they can do for her, which is why it really got under my skin when Chantal said this. I'm also getting Sam back. <laughs> like, I'm getting Sam back when I get my place. Yes, I'm gonna take very good care of him. His nails are not gonna get too long. The foster lady she's like after all she had a cat before sam an older cat and he doesn't really like sam i thought they were getting along but no imagine i'm getting king beezer back and i'll never leave him again pretty soon he'll be strumming on a new counter how incredibly convenient that for 18 months Chantal thought that he was safe and sound so safe and sound in fact that the woman supposedly fell in love with him and Chantal said well you can keep him forever and now that Chantal has decided to move back into the area boom sam's available and needs rescuing from a not so great situation. I don't think there's a foster and I don't think there's a mean older cat if there's even another cat at all. I think her aunt probably has him and is giving him back to his abuser. Thoughts and prayers for poor Sam. Though with all this bullshit talk about how Chantal misses her pets at home and in Kuwait, well there was a stark lack of talk on how much she missed her beloved husband. So much so a beezer even had to ask her if she missed the law. Um yes of course I miss him. <laughs> all the time. Oops, she forgot. Of course she misses him. It's not like they've been living separately for months or anything. I guess of course I miss him and I don't want to shit talk him. Like that's the only thing I ask. Let's just not talk about him. You can have your opinions, but just keep them to yourself. Like, you know, just 
he is my husband and you know it's important for me like a little bit of respect for that well that's weird why would shit talk even be on the table i mean they're still going strong right i would have thought something along the lines of of course you can't talk shit he's my husband somehow this gives off more please be nice to my ex vibes kuwait look i love kuwait and i do miss salah like a lot it's so hard being in a long distance marriage and for who who knows how long but this is like a sacrifice i have to make and it will be a true test of our relationship too because you know like that long of distance no yeah someday he can visit but what do i miss about him everything like just having that person there with you like for now i'm just fo i have to focus on me and you know beezing <laughs> on the 18th i have like a um therapy session but i'm like starting immediately because i have help from my family to like you know help me get in places and stuff she misses everything yet comes up with nothing you guys she's got to take care of herself and bees even though beezing is literally the opposite of taking care of herself either way if she's gonna start getting her head examined i'd say now is about time she's certainly gonna need it when their relationship gets yet another true kybella test and the urge to run back to kuwait is so strong it's sabotage sabotages her YouTube career and puts her new home sweet home at risk. I mean, that is unless she's still living out of her car. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> Hold on! I feel like I'm living out my car. Maybe I am. Ah! Oh. Am I living in my Kia? Yes. But I'm sure she's just joking, right? Kind of like here? Yeah, I want to have like a bed rot bees uh, era. No, I'm just joking. Except she was not in fact joking. First thing, I'm just going to order a bed and have like a really nice bed and just bed rot when I'm at home. I don't need all kinds of furniture. I just need a bed and a chair for the kitchen. <laughs> Is there a bed bound era incoming? We can dispensary bees whenever I get my own place. You know, I'm just driving around right now. So a lot of driving. So I want to be more clear headed. I'm so tired. Can we get stoned tonight? But I got my own place. We can have like a, I don't know, hamburgerized bees in no. <laughs> we can have like, you know, a hangout at night. I can do like live streams like three times a day again. <laughs> Coffee bees, dinner bees, cooking bees, and night bees and Mario bees. Is it just me or does it sound like Chantal is trying to grip hard on the success of the old days? Or was Salah just so controlling that he prevented her from doing all the content she wanted? Maybe she was just so depressed in Kuwait, being homesick and feeling alone due to her marriage being, well, let's just say not as loving as she'd like to portray. Maybe she wanted to have a bedbound era and he wouldn't let her dreams come true. Or is it all of the above? Let me know what you think in the comments. I think it's a little bit of the whole toxic buffet. With all these sudden changes in clothing, letting her chin hang out, moving from from Kuwait and talking about smoking weed again, where does that leave our perfectly imperfect Muslim on her religious journey? Is she as steadfast as she would like us to believe? I'm religious, so I don't care. Here's the thing. There's religion and there's culture, okay? I'm Canadian, like, blood-wise, and we believe in the medicinal power of marijuana, so that's something I'm going to consider because I know it would be frowned upon by most Muslim people, but for me, it's like, I don't know. It's like medicine for me. I don't think that's exactly how it works, but go off Chantal. No Ramadan's not over. I didn't have to fast while I was traveling. Um and yeah I don't know I haven't really been doing that right now but I'm still Muslim. I still believe in, in God and like how can I you know how can I just automatically uh, you know what you can stop believing. People switch all the time. People go through struggle you know. I think religion is something very personal you know you can stop believing. I don't know. It's pretty easy to stop pretending to believe in something you never believed in to begin with. I believe we'll be slowly seeing the hijab take a back seat too. Set the chin free. That's why I'm doing a little bit of the chin. I can reveal a little bit of the chin. Kiana, like even if I like taking off your hijab, no, I can't. I'm not doing that. Yeah, you can decide what being Muslim means to you. It's personal. Exactly. There's no compulsion in Islam. Like they say, you're not you know, like certain things anyways, it doesn't even say in the Quran, you have to wear a hijab on your head. 
it's interpreted that way by scholars. It's crazy because as important as the hijab has been to her for the better part of the last two years now, she's already planting seeds that, hey guys, you can Muslim however you want. There really aren't any rules. You don't even have to wear a hijab. That's just some scholarly assumptions. And you know what? People stop believing in things all the time. I believe we're seeing the baby steps of her deconstructing us from her cosplay religion. Are you worried about salabis? Thank you, Jessica. You know what? No, I'm not worried about, I'm not going to worry about that. Like I have my trust in renewed trust. I said I would do it like trust. Like I'm just going to live life. Like whatever happens, happens. You know, I'm not going to stress about that. I'm not going to, there's nothing I can do. I don't have a, I'm not a fly on the wall over there. I can't live my life distrusting somebody, you know, like I can't waste that energy. Um, If I ever learn of something that's different, I'll deal with it, but I'm not gonna, no, I'm going to focus on myself. Of course, right here in this moment, she's not at all worried about Salah. She's just going to live her life and you just can't constantly worry about these things. But then a little bit later in the live stream. Hope there's not a K-Bella 2.0. Me too. Do you know how hard it is when you've been through something like that with someone to trust them when you're away? Obviously I'm dealing with that. But the thing is, is I'm not going to let it ruin like my time, you know? And that's really hard for me because that's all I sometimes want to focus on. So I have to force myself to like be productive and distract myself with other things and get used to this new reality. And it feels like I'm always getting used to a new reality. And it's like really mentally hard, you know, like I, I make my life harder on myself. I don't really think Chantal knows the definition of productive, but that's besides the point. It seems Chantal is in fact worried about someone twerking again quickly and has resigned herself to the knowledge that it's inevitable and there's not a damn thing she can do about it except hope it doesn't go public. In the meantime, she's gonna go bees on some fresh green as long as she stays away from the green peen and go get used to her self-inflicted, ever-changing reality. I know a lot of you can't comprehend how I could even, you know, ever forgive somebody, like get forgive him for that or whatever. But like I said, I've evaluated on based on a lot of other things, good things in a relationship. And, um, you know, I made that decision um, that being said, um, you know, I'm also not go. I'm also taking care of myself and not gonna, like, I'm always, I always have my guard up in a way now, you know, so I also, um, just out of respect for my marriage, I don't want to talk about, like, very personal things about our relationship or about Salah. If I ever, if something ever happened and I had to be single again, I would stay that way. I don't have any emotional energy to invest in something. I just don't. I, I can't do it. I don't want to. I don't. So happy with just good people around me. That's platonic. Fine. That's fine with me. Well, surprise, surprise. There's been a wall up in paradise. But we can all rest assured that there won't be any Natter 2.0s because it's not that there's a lack of quality men who are running to be by Chantal's side. She's just going to choose the single life, you know, if it ever comes to that. Despite this dank high, homeless fresh start and constant shift in reality, she seems far happier. And I don't think that's just the fresh green flowers running through her bloodstream and people are noticing. Reginald, fill a deposit fund. You finally seem like yourself again. Missed you. Kuwait is the saddest. Like, why was it depressing for you guys? Just because you you guys are used to me having such an outgoing personality to being completely muted or what? <clears throat> That's what it was, right? That was not me. Well, I think a lot of it is cultural. I don't think it's like haram to laugh at farts. But I could be wrong. I don't know. Have you seen sad? No, I was like happy there, but like... I feel like I want to break free. <laughs> I want to break free and eat chicken pot pie with some nashies. No, I have to get healthy, but first I need to like have a celebration. In the beginning of this live, Chantal would have you believe she uprooted herself permanently due to heat and health. Now she wants to break free from her super loving, thoughtful husband in the beautiful country with magical healing sunlight in which she loves so much. With that, she did start up another live to celebrate with a pot pie and nashies. Well, almost. Oh, <gasps> no, I forgot my Nashville chicken tenders. Those mother. Whoops. While she enjoyed only part of her intended meal for many and drank, uh, gravy. Drinking gravy is healthy? No. It's embarrassing. Despite still wanting more food after all of that. I want more pot pie. No, I'm full. Ish. 
You can begin to see the effect of the carbs and fat entering her bloodstream, dampening the high levels of THC that once flowed in its place. See, uh, this is not good. This is not good. You're right. I should go get some sleep or go for a ride maybe. I don't I don't feel like sleepy. I just feel down a bit. That's all. Leaving her once again a shell of a person, yet still weirdly happier than our everyday lazy girl world underlord used to be over in Kuwait. <laughs> I know, I thought Foodie Beauty was dead. Well, some parts. <laughs> but, you know. <sighs> Anyways. So, Pius Miriam has left the chat because Foodie Beauty wants to come back, and though here, earlier in the live stream, it almost dawned on her how bad her content really was. Can't wait for the foodie videos. Yeah. I miss, honestly, I do miss, like, my, my content was, I don't know. She brushes that right off and pushes forward because you can never hold Chantal down for long. When it comes to the depths of the toxic ocean, Chantal's buoyancy is unmatched, even by Amber Lynn. As Canada goes into yellow alert due to the strange sulfuric haze suddenly hanging over Cornwall, I will be ending this video. Before you go, please do all the YouTube things and keep an eye out for the next episode of Foodie Beauty and the Foop Tales. Speculation Station signing out. Take care of yourselves. Taking shots at the enemy I'm gonna make it to the top, leave a legacy If I got something to say, you better let me speak Turn it up a new degree, bitch, you ain't seen anything